if I'm playing over here and I'm trying to make this work with that, it's like, oh, no, it doesn't work here. Let's see if we can just massage those together. And it doesn't matter which one I look at, right? It's just the same either way. If you love indie tales, be sure to subscribe here and on Twitch, where I'm live most weekdays. You can also show your support through Patreon or on itch.io, where I upload assets and games shown on the channel. Hey, hey, welcome to a new video. Pals, today I want to share something that's so exciting to me because it's something that I've been waiting for for literally years. I mean like two, three years I've been waiting for this thing to arrive and it's finally around the corner and I have the pleasure of uh, introducing it to you as a little bit of a sneak peek. Uh, the trailer for this thing is coming soon, but uh, I have it in beta form right here right now. And the thing that I'm talking about is a Sprite 1.3 with tile sets. Now this week I've been working on dungeon tile sets for Insignia and it's been a real treat to work with Aceprite. I want to share with you this room that I've been working on, which is one of many, uh, that is tiled with a tile set that I created here uh, in Aceprite 1.3. So check it out. This is uh, one of the new rooms <laughs> for the dungeon in Insignia. It's really, really detailed, not 100% polished yet, but it would have been impossible for me to create a tile set like this one in the previous version of Aceprite. Aceprite's tile set features are not entirely unique. There are things out there like pixel edit and promotion that do have features that are similar, but the way that Aceprite does it is so good. It's so intuitive. So this is the room. This is the final result. Let me show you what the tile set looks like. Okay, here we have it. This is the tile set that I created in Aceprite. We're in Aceprite right now. And if I turn the UI back on, it'll look a little bit different from what you're used to if you've used Aceprite in the past. Now, the major difference between this version of Aceprite and the previous version is the existence of tile map layers. Tile map layers allow you to create tile sets and then map them for levels in your game. Now, you don't have to use Aceprite for the whole process. I mostly use it to create these tile sets, and I'm going to show you how that works now. So, say you have a new document. And you've got a basic layer here. You can say layer, you can go new, and then tile map layer. The standard properties here are 16 by 16, but you can change them to be whatever size you want. And once you press okay, here you are in your tile map layer. You can tell it's a tile map layer because of the little tile icon next to the name of the layer. You can also see this additional index here um, for tile references. The key thing you wanna notice here when this is enabled are these four icons. These four icons represent the actual uh, tile features or the, the palette controls that change the modes for creating tiles and moving them around and stuff. So uh, if you are just in this uh, default view and you're in this mode here, mode two, you can start drawing and create what, whatever you want. So, you know, you can start drawing your tiles. Let's just say we want this set of nine these are my grass tiles, let's just say. And already, after placing my uh, my pixels down and releasing the mouse, we have these new tiles. And they represent the grid spaces. We can actually turn on the grid and you can see them there. That represents you know, what the tiles are. I can start shading these and do whatever I want and it's no big deal. If I'm in this second mode here, these will get updated automatically and any time I draw into a new space, a new tile will be created. But what if I want to actually start placing the tiles down, right? And this is where the magic happens. Now, currently the, the brush mode is uh, for pixels, but if I want to change the brush to a tile brush, I press space tab that enables this guy here. I can do the same thing by just clicking it. And now what I'm doing is actually being able to place the tiles, okay? Now this sounds kind of neat. It sounds like I'm just stamping pixels down, right? But it's way, way more than that, right? Now that I'm here, I can actually take a brush and I can start drawing and you can see that we're actually drawing on the tile objects themselves and the copies of the tiles are actually respecting those updates. The reason why it's so powerful is it allows you to tessellate way more naturally all of your tiles. So let's just say, for example, in my tile set, I want to be able to do this, right? I want to be able to have maps where this goes into this, and we have these thin blocks here, right, for my level design. If I was in the previous version of Aceprite and I wanted to know whether or not this matched up with this, what would I have to do? I'd have to 
copy this, copy this, paste them over here, see if they worked. If they didn't work, I'd have to change them, copy them, paste them back. It was really, really tedious, right? And, and very difficult to make naturally tessellated tile sets. Instead, what I can do is literally just come over here, right? And these tiles, if I'm in the tile mode, I can select them, I can drag them, but the indices are, what are being selected and moved around, right? Not the pixels. So one, two, three, all of these numbers represent the tile index, right? The spot in the palette that's being moved around and all that's being handled here are those spots. So this grid space says I'm holding tile index one and that's the information on tile index one, okay? So now I can be over here, I can be drawing this and I can see automatically if this lines up with this, even though they're not really next to each other in the base tile set. You know, if I'm playing over here and I'm trying to make this work with that, it's like, oh, no, it doesn't work here. Let's see if we can just massage those together. And it doesn't matter which one I look at, right? It's just the same either way. It's really, really powerful. So all I have to do now is make sure that it looks good here and it looks good over here. And if everything looks good, then the whole thing works no matter what the contents are. So even though this looks really complicated, I can actually show you that I am actually reusing multiple different tiles in the tile set uh, for these more complex shapes. You know, here I wanted to have a way that, to be able to step up two tiles without going into the dirt or one tile. And so I needed this extra uh, index here, but it actually just hooks up to the existing tiles there. So I can just focus on what looks good and a sprite takes care of the rest. It's really, really, really exciting. So there is one awesome little discovery that I made while I was working on this tile set this week that I don't even know whether or not the creator of 8 Sprite is aware of this workflow. Uh, probably not, but I'm going to share it with you now. I use tile to create the tile maps within which I place the 8 Sprite tile sets. So I export the image and what I do is I have this fancy setup where I can actually create um, very primitive shapes, right? Do whatever I want here and then press M and it determines automatically which tiles should go where. Okay, press M again. Tiled has this really fancy setup that allows you to define visual rules uh, to allow it to auto tile the scenes. That's not what I wanna show you right now, but just so that you know it's there. But what's really cool is if I'm looking at my tile map here, and I'm not 100% happy with how something works. Let's just say it's this seam here that I'm not super happy with. What I can actually do is zoom to 100% view. I can just grab what I want, screenshot it, go into a new file in a sprite, paste it, delete everything that's not part of the tile set. And if I align these properly, these will be accepted by my tile set as actual indices. So I'm gonna try this. I don't know if it's gonna work straight away, but we'll see. If I paste these guys here, we can actually treat it just like it's part of the tile set automatically. And we can start drawing over it to make it tessellate the way that we would have wanted it to. And then we can delete this, re-export, and it will be fixed over here. So you can actually take screenshots of your tiles as long as they're cleaned up, paste them into a sprite they will retain their tile references because the pixel data is the same. And then you will be able to just edit them in place exactly as they are to make them look how you want. Update the tile set and it will update here automatically. How amazing is that? So that's what I've been doing this week and I am exceptionally excited for how awesome this feature is coming along. There are so many really, really incredible little details and things that have made this workflow possible like i never would have been able to create this tile set um, without this feature basically and i've tried it in other software i've tried it in pixel edit i didn't like it i've tried it in promotion couldn't get it going uh, this was so easy to set up and it's going to change insignia's levels for the better so couldn't be happier there are a few other things that the ace bright uh, 1.3 feature update comes with. One of those is an external preview window. So I created a uh, time lapse the other day in my previous video. And the way that I was able to do that was to actually take a preview window, put it on a second monitor, scale it to 100%, and then record that window. Uh, it's a really, really awesome way to do time lapses because when I'm working, I zoom in and out quite a lot. 
So me coming in and, and you know, zooming in and zooming out, it's quite jarring. Whereas this allows me to control where the camera is and keep it fixed when I'm working so that it's much more easy to view in a time-lapse later on. So that is a Sprite 1.3. There's, I'm sure, going to be more information coming out about it very soon. And the open beta, right now it's in closed beta, the open beta will be around the corner. I don't have dates. Uh, you're going to have to check the Aceprite Twitter account or Aceprite.com for more information about that. Uh, in the meantime, I am going to be, yeah, having an awesome time playing with uh, these new tile sets for my dungeon design as I'm working in the uh, second chapter of Insignia. At the moment I am doing prototype mechanics, I'm doing some new enemies, I'm doing a lot of new environment art, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to convert some of that stuff into tutorials and videos for you to watch in the future. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Hey pal, thanks for watching and thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project Insignia. To find out more click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button, and then YouTube will tell me, and then I'll make more videos. That's nice. Thanks again, and uh, until next time.